hello everyone, I am Randy Suarez, in case you're recording today back here with another amazing reaction. This time we're all reacting to some more Josh Johnson, and it's about the Young Thug ca uh, case, and he's going to explain this in 40 minutes, so this is going to be a long video. And I have another long video coming up, but that one I'm going to split into parts, but this one, we're going straight into it, because at the end of the day, I'm heavily interested, because, at the, because this case was wild from start to finish. And it's it's insane. I was I barely kept up with the case, but knowing how this is gonna be explained, it's gonna explain into repeat details of it. So if you like any 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 of this content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe to Josh Johnson. I will leave the original link to this video down below to watch it uninterrupted. Also, link to my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow me on those social platforms. Link to my cash app. Feel gracious enough to donate whatever you want to donate. That's fine. Don't. That's fine as well. Say thank you, super thanks. But by donating, like, comment, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff, however you show, show your support, it lets me know you're rock with the reaction content, rock with the channel, and rock with your boy. But further ado, buckle up and let's get started. All right, we here with some more Josh Johnson, Young Thug, the longest trial in history. Not just that, though, the longest spending money trial in history. So, but all I can say is, let's go. Sometimes I find myself falling down whole rabbit holes. On, online for things, stories Same. and stuff and there's a there's a case there's a trial it just ended and i think it may qualify for trial of the century i know that's premature to say but i don't know i think it's pretty incredible the trial of young thug <laughs> just ended now if you don't know who young thug is he's a rapper it's not a dog whistle this time right. <laughs> to be honest i don't know to be honest it does sound like a dog whistle that would be selling peco young thug is a rapper that was on trial in fulton county in georgia right basically the state's case what they were alleging was that he took all of the money that he made from music and he funneled it through and to a gang a gang called ysl a gang that he was supposedly the leader of right and that's the state's case and the judge in the case looked exhausted <laughs> the third judge because there were three judges within two years. And I'm like, dude, and two of those judges have to excuse themselves. Best way I can put it. Acquitted, whatever you want to put it. I, let's just, he'll most likely go into more of that and we go into that when it comes up, okay? I've never seen a judge act like this before. Every time the court camera cut to her, her head was in her hands. <laughs> Like, dude, she was exhausted. I'm not gonna act like I know the law, okay? My understanding of the law sort of begins and ends with Law & Order SVU, all right? <laughs> yeah, to be honest. So I know you can sustain. <laughs> and you can object. I've never heard a judge be like, you can't do that. <laughs> she said it a lot. And now the prosecution in the case, the prosecutor had given out a lot of plea deals. A ton of plea deals. More plea deals than I thought you could give out. I didn't have a number in my head, but this felt like an egregious amount of plea deals. It just felt like she was going to the hood, like you get a plea deal, you get a plea deal, you get a plea deal, you get a plea deal. She was basically giving a plea deal to everybody in Georgia but Young Thug, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was giving these plea deals in return for their cooperation, their testimony, testimony that she would use to piece by piece paint the bigger picture that the state was alleging that Young Thug's a leader of YSL. Everything they do is by his direction. All his money goes through and to them, right? Mm -hmm. And the only problem is the prosecutor in this case gave plea deals to some of the least helpful people in human history, all right? That never made sense to me, too. Because, like, if they weren't willing to help you, why would you give them the plea deals? I don't know. I've never seen people less helpful than this. This, this was astoundingly unhelpful. I was helping my friend move one time. <laughs> and he and I had to move a pool table. Yeah. Just us. 
downstairs. And our third friend was there at the bottom of the stairs just watching. Of course he was. And even he was more helpful than anyone that the prosecutor gave a plea deal to in this case. At least he could be like, watch a step, watch a step, something. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about some of the testimony. I'm gonna need you to be patient with me because a lot of the, a lot of the dudes testified in this trial are going by their rapper name and they haven't made it yet. So I don't know. Which is sad knowing the fact that you're going just by your rapper name. And you sold nothing. Your street credit is literally zero. I don't know why it's spelled like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. Just, I'm gonna say he for short, all right? There's one dude that was on the stand, right? And the prosecutor asked him a very specific question, very specific reason. She goes, did Young Thug have an issue with Rich Homie Kwan bringing his friend to the party, right? Now, Rich Homie Kwan is also a rapper who has sadly passed away, but his friend, to the best of my knowledge, allegedly, is a gang member, right? This whole question is to paint Young Thug as a leader of a gang. That's why he would have a problem with a different gang member coming to his party, right? So the prosecutor asks, did Young Thug have an issue with Rich Homie Kwan bringing his friend to the party? And then this guy on the stand goes, uh, uh, uh. Thug, did you have an issue with Rich Homie Kwan? Not supposed to do that. <laughs> oh man, talk. Okay, the best way I can explain this case was everywhere and yet nowhere. Because at the end of the day, it felt like they were just putting Young Thug in some in a situation that he never asked to be in, and y'all just trying to get someone in jail to stop a gang that most likely would even if you did put young thug in jail let's hypothetically they say they did ain't gonna stop nothing i mean y'all didn't cut the root of the problem Never in the history of court <laughs> have I seen someone ask a question by the prosecution and then go, I'll just go to the source. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same. And so then the prosecutor goes, no, 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 I'm asking you. Did Young Thug have an issue with Rich Homie Kwan bringing his friend to the party, all right? And then this guy goes, I, I'm not young thug, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nah, okay. Moments later. <laughs> <laughs> Prosecutors asking question after question after question, all alleging the same thing all to the same end right and this dude he's not he's not being combative he's not even being rude he's just not being helpful <laughs> and so then the prosecutor pulls up i don't know if she pulled up it exactly but basically references his plea deal where she goes i have right here you answering questions definitively that i'm asking you right now and, then and here's the weird part if you ask if you answer if you ask, answer a question and the, the suspect is under duress, they try to get out of the situation that they're currently in now. They don't probably don't know why they're in the situation in the first place. So they will answer anything just to get out. This guy on the stand mm. goes, y'all wrote that, I just signed it. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> the zoom in is crazy. <laughs> Never in the history of court, at least that I know of, and it's like, you know, the internet especially was of two minds, because it was like people could not decide if these were like some of the dumbest people who had ever lived or legal masterminds. I'd probably say a little bit of both, but knowing the fact sometimes even the justice system don't get it right. If y'all know, y'all know. Because at the end of the day, they, it feels like when come down to it, and there's been many, many, many times there are cases that have been recanted because sloppy work. You didn't follow through. You just want to close this case and move on to the next one. Which is fine. And that fine and dandy until the, you got the uh, if you get the right person, but if you got the wrong person, you just ruin somebody's life. And that's how we am getting stuff like the Innocence Project and among other things, because sloppy work for our own law enforcement, our law, own justice system is like messed up. But I digress. <laughs> Because basically what this dude is saying in open court, right, is, look, you I, you were about to give me how many years. I didn't want to do how many years, and you told me if I signed the paper, I wouldn't do how many years, right? So I signed the paper, but I'm not about to perjure myself. Yeah. dude was supposed to be on the stand for three hours. Oh, God. Three days later. Oh, God. The prosecution is asking question after question after question, all to the same end, right? And, you know, references again. Look, I understand that we typed it up, but what is in this is based off of what you said to the police. This is based off the mm -hmm. testimony you gave during interrogation. And he was like, yeah, but if you gave it to me to type up, it would say something different than what you have right there, right now. <laughs> Even the prosecutor was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Question after question after question after question. And finally, this dude, he doesn't snap exactly. He doesn't lose it, right? I think he just gets exhausted. And finally, he says, look, I'll tell you when I told the police. I'll say anything. Like... <laughs> He said that he said this full court, by the way. So basically saying, hey, he's saying that he will snitch, say anything just to get out of the situation that he's in now. And that's as daunting yet yeah, the point that but you wanted to y'all willing to go with that. And like when someone says that, you have to get another new witness in general. That's it. This is a witness for the prosecution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. The whole case is insane because you even look at you even look at the the fact that the case had three different judges. It was telling. Yeah, got passed off like a bad baton. First judge, first judge was Judge, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I think it's Glanville, Glanville, yeah. And th this judge, he does seem to suck. Like he does. Yeah. <laughs> but he also had to put up with some stuff too because there were jurors that were fully out of pocket during this case. Just a couple of examples. There was one juror that got picked. It already took nearly a year, by the way, to pick a jury which is insane. And then after they pick the jury, there's one juror that during the tr trial has started and I think they just 
went to the Dominican Republic? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Deputies got sent to their house, were knocking on the door, everything, and then they got back, and they had to appear in court, and the judge was like, you have to, you have jury, do you have to be here for jury. To be on the jury. <laughs> and they were like, every day? <laughs> Yes, that's how jury duty works until the case is finished. That sounds wildly inconvenient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the judge the judge was ready to, you know, hold this jury in, in contempt and was basically giving them an out because this judge in particular loved contempt. He loved it. He had a lot of contempt. <laughs> the entire trial full of contempt. <laughs> and gave the juror a way out. He was like, look, I could send you, I could send you to jail, I could fine you, but what I'm gonna have you do instead is write me a 30 page paper on the importance of being a juror. What are we in high school? This dude sentenced her to APA style. <laughs> For real. He sentenced her to citing sources. You couldn't see his face in the moment, but even Thug was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel and unusual. I've never heard of that before. More unusual than cruel, to be honest. There was another juror that I, I, admittedly, I don't even know what happened with this person, but I know that they got in trouble for, <laughs> for live streaming the case. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Put the phone away. <laughs> Why would you live stream a case court? It's already live stream, to be honest, but you just live stream the live stream, like. <laughs> which is, uh, which is extra crazy because it was being live streamed. Really? <laughs> like if you had been watching at home, you would just see them sit with the jury like <laughs> It's ridiculous. You risk jail time for an extra angle. We are <laughs> Judge Glanville, oof. There's, you know, there was a lot of, um, a lot of plea deals being given out the entire case, like I said before. And some of the things that were happening was, I, I'm, this is, this is me guessing, but there were people that were not being super forthcoming, that they probably didn't necessarily have to be, but they were in some sort of trouble. And so the plea deal was just given just as an extra, it's okay, you can talk, we just need to get this guy, right? And even with that, there were still people that didn't quite want to testify. And then there were people that were being so difficult, state's witnesses who were being so difficult that the state just could not get anywhere. You know? And there was one person, star witness. Okay. The, basically, the prosecution needed a through line. They needed something that would connect everything. And so they laid a lot of it on one person, one person in particular. Okay? And they needed his testimony so bad that they pretty much gave him immunity on the stand. I didn't even know you could do that. He's saying. It sounds made up. It sounds fake. I feel like he thought it was fake too because he was like immunity on, so if I say something on the stand 
answering one of your questions. And it implicates Thug, but it also implicates me. I'm okay. Yeah, you're okay. You have immunity. Immunity on the stand. You're, you're going to be good. Mm. You sure? Yeah, you're going to be good. Okay. I'm not even joking. He goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but what if it's federal? <laughs> and I love that. I love I love a good haggle. I love like, okay, I hear immunity. I hear immunity, but can I get a federal? Can I get some federal? Federal, please. Can I get a little federal? Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. This dude gets on the stand, and you can tell, you can tell he doesn't trust it. You can, you can tell he's like, nah, they're, they're up to something. Doesn't want to answer any questions, but we told you, you have immunity. All right. <laughs> Basically compelling this man to testify, you know, dangling immunity in his face. Sits on the stand. First question from a prosecutor. How old are you? And he goes, <laughs> at that point like you know what your honor i think we're done with this case <laughs> oh he got a star witness they wouldn't even answer the basic question how old are you like seriously what's going on Grown. <laughs> oh. The prosecutor's like, what do you mean by grown? It's like, I'm an adult. <laughs> prosecutor is like, okay, seeing as you're an adult, how many years is that? And then he goes, <laughs> looks over at the judge. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Truly incredible work. Yeah. <laughs> Truly phenomenal, you know? <laughs> They would, they would be asking him lots of questions, you know? Question after question. And it was getting frustrating for the prosecution. It was getting frustrating for the judge because, look, uh, maybe I'm, I'm doing my best to be as fair as possible, but when you watch a case like this, it does just seem like if you're a defendant, you're up against two parties. You're up against the prosecution and you're up against the judge because mm -hmm. everything in this case kept giving the prosecution chances, even when they would mess up. Because once again, they're not being given a lot with testimony, but there are things that they have in hard evidence. They're just not bringing them all together to make it cohesive, right? Yeah. And then this star witness's testimony is not helping. So then, can't stress this enough, you cannot do this. Judge Glanville supposedly has a secret meeting with the witness and the prosecution, but not Young Thug's lawyers, right? It's, it's something in Latin that I don't know how to pronounce, but you're not supposed... Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. It actually is against the law to do so. If you have to do it, you have to throw away the whole... The judge has to accuse himself from that case, and they have to literally get a whole new judge. Like, he wasn't being neutral, basically. You're supposed to be neutral in these things. And he clearly, clearly was not. To do it. <laughs> I mean, and basically, in this meeting, this witness is then threatened with the dangled immunity and everything. Oh, we'll charge you for this. We'll hold you in contempt for two years. We'll put you in jail. All this stuff. Unless you start testifying, unless you start answering questions to the best of your ability. I don't want to hear any more of this pleading of the fifth. All that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so then they go back, they go back to court and 
He's answering questions so well that the defense gets suspicious. Because he wasn't before. Defense is like, what happened between now and lunch? All of a sudden, he remembers everything. He remembered what color everybody was wearing. And then it comes to the defense lawyer's attention that there was this secret meeting. And so he addresses it in court, in front of the judge, to the judge. He goes, Your Honor, I've, I've, had, I've heard some distressing news that there was a secret meeting with you, the prosecution, and the witness. My client and I were not privy to. I don't know what was discussed. You know, this person's acting different, not like, what is this? And the judge, instead of denying it, instead of being like, that's a horrible accusation, that's not true at all, the judge goes, who told you that? <laughs> Which it shouldn't matter, knowing the fact you are literally non-neutral in this situation, this whole case, because at the end of the day, what are you doing? You're a judge. You can look at it, you can look at it because it was live streamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can look, who told you that? And he's like, your honor, don't worry about who told me that. That's, that's, not even that's the, the least of my concern is who told me that. The, the meeting is my concern. He's like, no, no, I need to know. This is very distressing. I need to know who told you that. And he's like, your honor, it doesn't matter who told me that. Is that true? Like, did that happen? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> over and over and over. And it's just wild that, like, in a RICO case, it was a RICO supposed case. gang members, that the judge is like, who snitched? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. Oh, man. No, for real, who snitched, huh? Like, hey, I'm gonna need, I need you to come up out them names. Who snitched? Ain't nobody play with, look, I will bust everybody in here right now. Who snitched? And Doug's lawyer is like, no, look, I'm not gonna tell you, all right? I'm not gonna tell you how I came upon this knowledge. I'm just asking you if this happened. I'm asking you, maybe even for a mistrial. Like, how, how could this happen? He goes, who told you? Who told you? I'm gonna give you five minutes to tell me who told you. And Doug's lawyer is like, I don't need five minutes. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> that should be the least of your concern. Like, is this true? And he's like, I'm gonna hold you in contempt if you don't tell me. I will put you. I will put you in jail if you don't tell me. You will go. You will go to jail if you do not tell me. It's like, look, I'm not gonna tell you. You can put me in jail, but the problem is the meeting. The problem isn't who told me, right? And so then the judge does it. He holds Thug's lawyer in contempt, which is pretty terrifying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this judge is basically going over and over again. Who snitch? Who snitch? I can't stand a snitch. And you know. <laughs> And you couldn't see Thug's face in the moment, but he had to have been like, I know, right? <laughs> like, I can't stand this snitch either. <laughs> and so then Glanville does it. He holds Thug's lawyer in contempt. And, you know, the Bar Association hears about it. And they show up to back Thug's lawyer up because that's mm. terrifying. Yeah. That's terrifying if a judge does something, doesn't even bother denying it, and then holds you in contempt for asking. That's, that's a scary mm -hmm. court system. You know what I mean? Because that, that's one of those things, if it can happen to anybody, it can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that it's a, it's a, it's a case with, involving hip-hop, involving, like, gang culture, whatever, but that particular thing, that could happen to anybody, I promise you. That's very scary, you know? And so the bar association shows up to back this dude up, and it looks like his case is going to be heard, and probably the contempt is going to be thrown out. But basically, they tell Glanville, it's like, there's no way you're impartial. If you're trying this hard, there's no way you're willing to just let the facts play out. Yeah. And so Glanville has to 
recuse himself from the case. Recuse. And yeah. one of the things about recusing yourself, it doesn't undo damage. No. The case just goes on, you know? So there's still this, like, contempt hanging over Thug's lawyer's head and stuff. And then they move on to the next judge, and the next judge was the judge for a day. <laughs> I'm not like I'm not a judge and I don't know how judges get cases and stuff. Apparently this case was just given to her randomly and everything and then she got the case and she was immediately like, Hey, y'all, I I can't. Uh, <laughs> and so many people were like, Why? What's going what's the problem? Don't worry about me. <laughs> don't worry about me. <laughs> I can't right now. <laughs> So then the case goes to the third judge. You know, the judge just, ugh, that judge. Mm -hmm. The one is fed up. The case goes to her and she does her best. <laughs> but it's a very, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because there are things happening in the case that should just never happen. They actually had um, an officer come in who was, I guess you could almost call him a specialist in RICO cases through his police work, right? And even he made a mistake on the stand that that had the defense asking for a mistrial because basically the state handled the case so poorly, so messy, just so confusing, right? That defense, the defense would be asking for a mistrial consistently. They were asking for a mistrial the way that you act when you got two cards left in Uno. <laughs> If it ever reached that point, because it had, it did, he might as well grant it, right? But I digress. Anybody do anything, you're like, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> uh. Defense would call for a mistrial, not stop. <laughs> That's a mistrial right there, your honor, your honor. He just sneezed, that's a mistrial. That's, he gonna get everybody sick. Cause this, this witness on the stand, you know, his testimony I'm pretty sure had to be thrown out because even though he's an expert in RICO and everything, it was, two things were revealed that were pretty distressing. Mm -hmm. One, it's a RICO case, so they're trying to get everybody on everybody's crimes, but they never bothered to really look at the financial records of Thug, <laughs> which is pretty insane if you're telling me yeah. that all the money he makes, he runs through and to a gang. Yeah. And you didn't bother to check a chase statement or anything? Mm -hmm. That's wild. <laughs> And then, while this officer is giving testimony, he makes a mistake, a mistake that obviously wouldn't be called out by the prosecution, but does not get called immediately. And then the defense hears it, and then they're like, this is crazy, we can't allow it. Basically, he references uh, past convictions as part of a testimony to what this person would have done in this case. And you just, you can't do that. You gotta judge it by the merits of the evidence you have in front of you, mm -hmm. by what happened right now, right? And at one point, the judge loses it. She, um, she storms out. The judge goes, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> do, do, do. And that's how bad this case was. It was handled badly. Like, thugs, lawyers did, basically did wonderful. It's everybody else is like, what are y'all doing? It, like, like I said, the case was handled so badly from the um, prosecution is like, what are you, what are you, you have years of experience, what happened? <laughs> she hadn't even been the judge the whole time, but she was like, this is insanity. <laughs> and you couldn't see his face, but you can imagine Thug being like, I know, right? <laughs> So she almost grants a mistrial. You know, there's a, there's a mistrial with prejudice and mistrial without prejudice. Mistrial with prejudice is basically don't 
even bring it up again. Yeah. <laughs> Mistrial without prejudice is like, okay, you didn't make the best case or something happened or a bunch of jurors went to the Dominican Republic. So like, <laughs> we can try it again later. <laughs> and so, you know, the judge at one point has had it with the prosecution and is giving, is giving like a full on I ju you just so rarely hear people talk to like this on a live stream. And based on the whole tech talk. That aren't on a Zoom call at home <laughs> like yeah. this. She was just like, she was looking at the prosecution and she was at her wits end and she was like, I don't, I don't know what to say to you. Like, I don't know, I, with, with the years of experience that you have, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were willfully trying this case as badly as possible or if you were just so unorganized that you can't seem to string a coherent thought together on how two things are related. Mm -hmm. We've heard testimony, there are people that don't show up, we're leaving at 425, like, what, what, what is happening? And the whole time prosecution is like, You know, you ever just take your talking to because you know you're like, ah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't know. But the prosecutor had the same nod that dudes have on the street when they get yelled at on Valentine's Day. It's just like, Ooh, just go ahead and nod. Good to comparison. Accept that you've messed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. You know, and be thing after thing after thing, whether it was jurors, whether it was judges, you know, whether it was just wild testimony there were there were people so uncooperative right like it was one point where they showed this guy a picture right okay and it's a picture of him and thug and two other people apparently with the person I'm, i don't know i didn't see the picture but apparently with the person who was murdered right yeah because that's one of the charges there's drug trafficking there's like gun running there's all this stuff but there's also a murder right <laughs> and and when and when it comes to the to the murder that's one of the one of the big ones because they're alleging that thug paid for the getaway car right and so once again not checking his financial records seems <laughs> like an oversight um uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. And they show a picture, right, uh -huh. with all these people to someone on the stand. And they're like, do you recognize anyone in this picture? And he's like. <laughs> hey, brother, you need these glasses? I see me. Oh, okay. case with sure <laughs> Even when it came to the star witness, there was one time where they asked, they simply asked this dude, when did you meet Young Thug? And he was like, before I went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the sake of clarity, the prosecutor tried to clarify, which time before you went to jail? And he just goes, you right. Like, that's an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What did you do? And I don't know, I don't know how you, how you handle this sort of thing, because this ended up being the, the longest trial in Georgia's history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also, one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, because I guess plea deals cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it gets so bad that every day, every day defense is like, hey, mistrial, mistrial's still an option. You want to hit it with a little mistrial? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can <laughs> mistrial. You know what I mean? But then, you know, the, the prosecution would do something that would kind of warrant a little bit of a mistrial. Yeah. Like, there was even one point where they had someone on the stand 
read a caption from an Instagram post. And this caption had been poured over because basically through the hashtags, what a lot was being alleged, because you know, whenever there's letters, whenever there's numbers, it could have no meaning or it could have double meaning or it could it could mean exactly what the prosecution wants it to mean. It could mean what the defense wants it to mean. And so they, they were arguing about this one picture over and over again before they would let the person just read it out loud to the jury, mm -hmm. right? Because then, the, I don't I don't know if it's a gang, and I don't know if that was what was, the prosecution was alleging, but there was one point where the prosecutor was asking someone on the stand about a series of numbers, right? And a lot of people will sort of rep their area code. That's yeah. just a common thing throughout America, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, we have people repping cell phone numbers. <laughs> it is weird. It is, but yeah. That like that that one in mm, that's yeah. that's that's one of those things. It's like you don't even. It's so unifying. Everyone does it. Like <laughs> sometimes you just can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> but this but this is my thing. The dude on the stand, prosecutor asked him, "What's three seven four? And he was like. Numbers. <laughs> maybe it's a gang, maybe it's not. I have, I have no idea, right? But but basically, there's this there's this one picture that's being poured over over and over again, and this was the straw that sort of broke everything, right? Because they had, they had made agreements and they had even redacted the picture so that only what would be read was what the prosecution and defense agreed on based off of the evidence that they were both showing, right? Yeah. But then when they actually gave the picture to the person on the stand, nothing was redacted. <laughs> and the prosecutor had them read everything. And so then the defense is like, your honor. Like, seriously? <laughs> You, I've never heard a lawyer have to like go your honor, kind of like mom, like. <laughs> Thanks, mom. But this was it. Your honor, uh, uh, we just went over the thing. Why would Shaw? And sure enough, judge agreed. Judge was like, look, I. Get I gotta do something else with my life too, right? It's, it's, just, it's a waste of time. It can't just be this. <laughs> oh. And, and then and the judge said an interesting thing, and and like I said, I know a little, little, little bit about the law. Most of it, what not to do from this case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the judge says something where where she's like, I'm trying to salvage. I'm basically trying to salvage something here because I don't want an entire jury's 11 months to be wasted. I don't want, which to me is a little weird. It's a little weird and a little too late for that. <laughs> Knowing the fact this whole case took two years and some change just to get to this result. Like, oh, wait, dude, it's, it's that bad. Their time's already been wasted. Like, facts. This is about seeing if someone did or didn't do something. You know? And so, that statement was said, but then, you know, judge turns to the, to the defense and goes, I'm not gonna grant you a mistrial with, with prejudice, but would you like a mistrial without prejudice? And defense was like, yup. <laughs> And then she was like, I'm inclined to give it to you because this, this whole thing, this right here, no. Yeah. No, no. And so then, you know, they get to, they get to plea dealing a bunch of people day after day after day. And then they, they actually go to thug and they're like, look, 
You're facing like 25, 40 years for all the things that we are alleging, right? But we'll give you probation, right? We'll give you probation if you just admit that you are the leader of YSL, a gang, a gang where you can take all the money and you funnel it through into the gang and everything they do is at your direction. Like if you'll just say that probation, you'll be good to go, right? And then Thug says, no. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not just gonna accept. You came to me to make your case for you. You know what I mean? Ah, no. And that's the issue can't do that because by doing so you basically saying your case is one due from the start unless you get to get this person to agree to do that and it's very what's the word for it? shady that they do that and that's a very i don't know as to me that's a very like brave thing like i yeah. i i don't even fully understand all of the conditions around the sentence that he actually got, but I, that was what he was initially presented with. And he said no. And then the state said, okay, we're going to make sure that you do 25 years. Then some. And that doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't. And it obviously didn't sit right with his defense attorney. His defense attorney brought it up when the judge was about to make a decision. Basically, he says, Your Honor, the state came to us and they said he could do probation if he signs this piece of paper or he could do 25 years if he doesn't. And I'm just kind of curious why the state would allow someone that they're so sure is a racketeering, mm -hmm. drug peddling murderer to go free with probation if they're sure, right? Yeah. And that he'll do 25 years if he doesn't say what they're so sure of. And the judge was like, good point. It is, surprisingly it is. That is very hard to argue against. <laughs> you know? And then the the judge granted thug probation and, you know, went home. And there are some people that are like, man, you know, if he could have just stuck it out a little bit longer, seen the trial to its end, there's no way he would have been convicted. The defense was ruining the state. Like, mm -hmm. just at every turn. And it was mostly the state tripping over themselves, mm -hmm. right? And I get it, though. That dude sat in jail without bond. Dude was in jail for two years. He was in jail for a year while they picked the jury. He was mm -hmm. in jail the entire trial, you know? And every once in a while, don't get me wrong, every once in a while, Thug would also laugh. Because, like, <laughs> he was facing a lot of time, but every once in a while, he'd also be like, how did we get here? This is... <laughs> like... Even he realized this was kind of cartoonish. <laughs> like, because it was. Like, how the prosecution, the state, handled this case that they say that he allegedly did so horribly. And, and these are people who have years, years of experience. Let's keep that in mind. So. This seems <laughs> far be it for me to say I'm just a rapper, but as far as the law goes, <laughs> um, but what I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I get it. I get it. somebody tells you, hey, you just do three more months, you'll go free forever, maybe. That's scary, you know? Yeah. And it's also scary that, like, that that the state needed it this bad. Yeah. That a lot of cases come down to reputation over justice. You couldn't just take the L, right? It's like, no, you will die in prison for me to not look bad. That's terrifying, you it's know? It's scary, definitely. And I know terrifying. it feels like it can't happen. But it can. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I don't rap, but I, I could see myself in a bad situation. <laughs> you know, because it just, it, it kind of begs the question, you know, did this person 
get away with a bunch of stuff? Or did the state just jam someone up for two years? You know, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I mean, I agree with the well, the lady said the latter, which is basically the second option. Like, most likely that's what happened. Because to the point that even if it wasn't, to handle this case so poorly, and, and the prosecution, the state, literally had years of, years of experience. Of like, what have y'all been doing for the, with those years of experience? That's the real question. <laughs> But that, but that's my thing. It's like it, it, I don't, I don't even know. And I'm, I'm obviously not thug. You know, I'm, i hope that, I hope that everybody can, can like move on in the most prosperous way possible. I really do. Every, everybody that testified, everybody. I, I, w I wish the best for everyone. I really do. I just can't seem to think. There's a level of peace you have to attain that I don't know if I have. Cause like it's like if someone accused me of being this like drug running you know, mm -hmm. murder this like horrible that. person, like yeah. this, this, that did all these things and they were willing to put me in jail forever with a bad case that they didn't have enough evidence for. And then they were just like, you can go if you just sign it. I think it would make me mad enough to kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> in a way. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Like I said, this this case was handled so poorly by the prosecution, the aka the state. The point that like you have to question their motives. Like what are you doing? But Josh Johnson uh -huh. Josh Johnson. Incredible bro. Incredible. Oh man, like I said, it's one of those cases that you literally have to ask a bunch of questions wondering like what are you what are the prosecution the prosec the prosecution are doing? What with the state and all that stuff like that. But anyway, I digress. Awesome video. I'm happy y'all stayed this long and this was like I said, this was a long video. Oh man. But anyway, if you like any any in the other's content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe to Josh Johnson. I will leave the original link to this video down below. Let's watch it uninterrupted and let me know in the comments down below what y'all thought about this uh, this case in general about Young Thud. He basically got probation for 15 years. I mean, he's free-ish, but he can't miss a day in weekly checkup and the, also a yearly checkup too. And you know, do like a be a spokesperson for gang violence and uh, no some other things so, but, but yeah but let me know in the comments down below but till next time please take care of yourself stay hydrated stay safe stay warm peace out and little questions is everything they know about you